So I've been learning how to use Godot for a while now, and I wanted to put some of my fresh skills to the test and hold my own personal game jam in which me and I are the only contestants. So how did that go? A little over four years ago, I made a game using Scratch in only two and a half hours to test my skills. The deadline was originally two hours, but I overshot my mark, a trend that I am certain I've outgrown. My goal for this project was to recreate my original game from four years ago within the Godot engine. To put both me and I on an even playing field, I set my timer for two hours 30 and open Godot. The game is rather simple. You play as a waiter who must deliver different order numbers to their corresponding tables in a timely manner such that they don't accumulate and lead to your firing. It occurred to me rather early on that I still had an advantage over my younger self. I knew what the end product looked like, so I would always have a clear decisive goal in mind. To counteract this, I decided to pop both kneecaps and make the game in 3D. Conceptually, 3D is what I'm most familiar with, and in just a matter of minutes I had the basic scene and movement controls set up. Whilst texturing was easy, in the grand scheme of being a 3D game I had some important decisions to make in regards to the art style. I quickly decided against anything pixely because I don't want to become one note, but I worried that going too realistic would mean facing some issues such as lighting, environments, performance, etc. Evidently I wasn't that worried though since I spent 10 minutes trying to get a height map working in the game, and uh... Yeah, turns out Godot doesn't support those, or maybe it does, but nobody in the world has ever talked about it. Researching Godot is so fun. While we're here, I might as well give a quick shout out to the World Environment node for legitimately being the most helpful node in Godot. It's like all of Unity's render, pipeline, post-processing, mumbo-jumbo stripped down to the essentials and combined into one all-powerful graphical deity. I plop in an HDRI from Polyhaven, flip a couple switches, and my game looks like this. The process of creating the character went smoother than expected. I'm reasonably comfortable in Blender, so slapping together a few smooth shapes is no biggie, but even things like the animation needed barely more than a double pass of tweaking to look good. I plopped them all in game and repeated the same process with the tables, the dispenser, and the burger. Mwah. But by the time I had finished making the models and setting them up in game, I realized I only had 20 minutes left on the clock, and that's when I could feel the shark bite. The game was, I will say, not even remotely finished. I hadn't done any of the coding for dispensing burgers, sliding them along the machine, picking them up, dropping them off, or getting paid slash fired. These are all essential to the game. This is entirely what comprises the minimum viable product. So I accepted my fate, put the pedal to the metal, and decided to keep going past the deadline. But here's what I had at the deadline. All right, so here's where I'm at. Let's let's see the game. So we can run around like that. We got. Little burger there, this little guy. <laughs> Going around all the tables. Oh, and the player's lifting up. I will work on that. That's two hours and 30 minutes of progress. It looks good, I think. Give me another half an hour and I'll tie together all the remaining pieces, I thought. But I can tell you right now, it doesn't look a whole lot different at the three hour mark, nor at the 10 hour mark. I have a love-hate relationship with deadlines. They're kind of an enigma in that they can be both the reason you finish something, but also the reason you never finish something. It's all about setting one at just the right time. Too long, and I tend to procrastinate and then rush to get it all done last minute. Too short, and I fail to meet my goal and lose all motivation to work on the project afterwards. But it's not just the feeling of being motivated that disappears. It's as if some integral part of my brain slows to a crawl, and I struggle with almost every aspect of what I'm working on. Simple problems cause the greatest headaches, and I often find myself stuck in a repetitive thought process. Two well-meaning reasons for this are, one, that I both consciously and subconsciously push all the hardest tasks to the end, and two, my brain is going to be more tired after doing several hours of work. That's how the brain works. But there's a lot more to it than that. I think even if I went to sleep and woke up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed the next morning, I'd still be faced with a lot of the same problems. I take breaks, I go for walks, I have some lunch, but now my mind is stuck somewhere. Do I call it quits? Do I say, this is it, this is what I can do? Do I keep going? If I keep going, then what? How far do I go? Do I set another deadline? Would I even care if I set another deadline? The game, 
the original game, isn't good. It's not very fun, it's poorly designed, and it gets boring frightfully quick. My goal was to recreate this game in some vague sense, but do I change it? Do I improve upon this game? With a deadline, the answer is a very simple no, but with all the time in the world, I'm no longer sure. At some point, I looked at the little character walking around and I thought, wouldn't it be great to have some sound effects playing while they walked around? And maybe a plop sound as the burgers fell, or a ding whenever you got a point. What if the tables had chairs? And what if the chairs had people in them? And what if the people had different orders, and the store had walls, and a door that people walked in and out of? And what if the player made the food? And what if I recreated Papa's Burgeria? But I had to set an end flag somewhere. At what point do I say, I'm done? This is it. I hear that anything worth doing is worth doing well. But what if you don't know what's worth doing? I continued working with a new goal, get to the point of having recreated the original game by the end of the day. I didn't create that goal intentionally, I just began feeling that pressure build as the day approached its end. I'm here to try and get things done. I think I want to close almost all of this. I got the burger slider working. Each time a burger is created, it's added to a list of other burgers. Depending on its place on the list, it moves towards a spatial node placed evenly along the line. When the player clicks the burger, a bunch of nodes are disabled, a bunch of nodes are enabled, and the burger is removed from the list. There's actually a special function for arrays called pop front that removes the first item on the list and slides all the others back a position. It's exactly what I needed. When it came to clicking on buttons and tables, I really was not in the mood for raycast math, so instead I opted for placing buttons in the 2D view and just changing the opacity to zero. Some tweaks to add a text display, a menu animation, background, and I was pretty much done. The next morning, I made one final addition, that being a better looking candle flame, and then I uploaded it to itch.io, signifying the end of this particular project. Some very important things happened in those last eight hours. I mean, really, it was most of the fundamental coding that took so much time, but it shouldn't have. Am I that slow at programming? It's all the same problem solving I did back when I was using Scratch, just different syntax. If I had started by getting all the code done and then ran out of time on the graphics, would the timeline look different? I honestly don't know. I used to be terrible at setting deadlines. Whether it was for school or for personal projects, I just gave myself the wrong amount of time, and it always led to a result that I wasn't happy with. At least in the interim. I've been getting better for sure, but things like this prove that I still have a long way to go. A lot of people struggle with deadlines. A lot of people struggle way more than I do. That two hours turned into ten hours, but in some other case that could be two months turning to ten months. Or two years to a decade. A little while becomes a lifetime as the list of things to do grows, your grasp on the original idea diminishes, and time slips away, just like that. Often, it's not just a matter of, is this worth your time, but a matter of, is this worth ten times your time. With all of it said and done, am I proud of what I have achieved? Well, on the account of blowing my deadline by nearly eight hours, I'd have to say no, of course not. I set a deadline and I missed it. That never feels good. However, I wouldn't say I feel bad by any means. I mean, I got a pretty cool video idea out of it, but in regards to the game, when I look at the end result, I can see a mediocre, unpolished project, but I can also contrast it with its origin and see a lot of reassuring improvement. More confirmation that I'm no longer stuck in that game development limbo that I think a lot of younger game devs can relate to. I think if I could go back in time to when I had just finished the Scratch version and show my younger self this game, well, he'd be totally blown away that time travel was created so soon, but I also think he would be proud, and that means the world to me. Also, if I had the opportunity, I would totally kick his ass in a fight, so that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's the end of the video. Play both versions of the game if you want, the URL is somewhere down below, and uh, yeah, alright, ciao for now. <laughs>